Apparently there was a hundred car pile up. It's painted lime green and probably charged twice the price for it. That's probably the coolest thing I've seen at the show. So I haven't made an intro to this video yet, but I am on my way to Louisville. Or I was until a massive snowstorm rolled through central Illinois. And the interstate in the next 20 miles was shut down with a hundred car pileup. They're still trying to clean up four hours later. So I decided to stop about two hours before than I wanted to. Back practice fell. But I'm gonna be on my way to Louisville, Kentucky. We're gonna go to the National Farm Machinery Show. We're gonna meet some people. We're gonna see some equipment and we're going to have some fun. So I'll see you guys tomorrow and I'm on the road at 4.30 in the morning. Ugh, I hate just thinking about it. Morning guys, I'm bright eyed and bushy tailed at five in the morning. Little, yeah, 515, close enough. Packing up, let's head on the road. They still, the interstate's, the interstate's not closed anymore, but they still say it's an hour delay after six hours. I, I find it hard to believe that. We'll see if GPS is wrong, but hopefully I can make some good time and be there before noon. Let's find out. Yep, roads are still absolute crap, and I actually just saw a semi literally flip over in the ditch. Man, yeah, the roads are still bad seven hours later, like 12 hours after the storm hit. There's a semi that just slid in the, that is slid in the ditch. He's been there for a while. There's an ambulance and a fire truck. I can guarantee you they've been busy tonight. Thank you all the first responders and everyone that's been out battling these elements. Man, if the roads are this bad, 12 hours after the storm, I can't even imagine during the storm just after it. Apparently there was a 100 car pile up. Another one in the ditch. Me and this plow are just cooking. We're going about 60 and the road's really not that bad. So thank you plow. Wow, 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 wow. And I just passed seven vehicles in the ditch and then that semi that was split in half. So I take it, uh, there was something bad that happened there. A couple more vehicles up here in the ditch. Wow. This guy ended up on the wrong way. Well, just made it to Louisville. It's a mud hole here, but at least it's not snowy, icy, crappy roads. So, we're at the Kentucky Expo Center. We're gonna walk in and go see some farm show stuff, see some people. You guys know the drill. See you guys in there. So I've ran into a couple people, ran into a couple people I know I should say, but it will walk through a little bit of the south wing. For the most part, everything is the same. All the vendors are still in the same spot, already still in this corner. This guy with the knife. Thank you, darling. Appreciate it. Is still demoing his knives, just like he has done the last three years, three times that I've been here. Because I've been here in 2019, 2020. They did not have the show in 2021 because of COVID-19, and then this year as well. So we'll walk around and see if we can find some interesting things. Oh, hey, there's the Larsons. I got a line waiting to talk to them. Planning on meeting up with Chet a little bit later. So there's a John Deere booth. I'll stop in tomorrow morning when I can actually, when there's not very few people here and walk around some of the equipment. See if I actually know anybody, because those of you guys don't know, I do work for Deere, so see if I can find someone I know. Ooh, that catches my eye, the new 50 series sprayer. Definitely gonna have to walk around that tomorrow. 4450, with the, uh, that's the 132 foot Millennium Booms on there. Well, if that doesn't catch your eye, I don't know what will. The new Ag Kim sprayers. I guess they're fed now. They had it lifted on a lift. It's kind of funny because that sprayer actually is supposed to be a four, a three season sprayer. You can put a dry box in the fall. You can spray herbicides and stuff in the spring and you can actually spray fungicides in the summer. Because when you spray fungicide, you need to get above the corn. So you need to have something that has high clearance. So that sprayer has that capability they just magnify because they put it on lifts. It's actually a cool marketing technique. Good marketing. Yeah. <laughs> this ideal is the first combine mass produced that has no steering wheel, which I actually like the concept. I know those two. Ryan and Hannah from How Farmers Work. We'll just talk to them at some point. So I'm seeing a lot of neat stuff here. Not a lot of new stuff. Like I said, I'm pointing out some of the new stuff, but I will talk about something that you don't see in our area whatsoever, but you do see a lot get farther south and east. So in our area, like you guys know, we have a lot of topography. We have a lot of hills, which provides a lot of natural drainage. But if you farm in the very easy farming areas like God Country in Central Illinois, Southern Indiana, whatnot, you sometimes need to make what's called ditches to help drain your fields if you don't if you can't invest in tile or shoot it. It's just another way to get a, get that excess surface water off your f field quickly. So what it so all a ditcher is is it's just a three point implement that's got a PTO and it just spins this honestly a just fin turbine ba blade type thing. It's got a, this massive hard face on there because all this does is just spins, grabs the dirt, and chucks it. They got all sorts of sizes. 
up to this massive one. This is ridiculously huge. So a lot of people have been telling me to check out this massive 1150 that's been mentally restored. Yeah, I can't wait to climb up around that thing. They have a combine, they have quite a bit of stuff here. So Deer doesn't have an X9 here. I'm kind of disappointed. I was really hoping they'd have one because they haven't had an X9 ever at the National Farm Machinery Show. Oh well, but they do have an 8R, two 6Rs, a planner, a baler. Oh well, what do you do? So I'm gonna go to a, I'm gonna go attend a talk or whatever put on by Tractor Zoom. They're gonna talk about used equipment values and how they think it's gonna skyrocket already more than it already has. So that'll be interesting to listen in on. See if I can take any information away from you guys. A little miniature display is always really cool to look at. Probably the most realistic thing they got on there. <laughs> they got a tractor stuck in there pulling all the dozers. That's awesome. So I learned some interesting stuff in that tractor zoom market. Basically, kind of high level synopsis. Tractor zoom's a really cool app. You guys should really check it out. It offers a lot of insights on used equipment purchases, auction histories, everything like that. Take a look, especially if you're in the use in the market for used equipment. But equipment prices don't look good, so. It's gonna be an interesting couple years, but I don't see a price dropping anytime soon. This is Apache Boots. I'm gonna hop in one of these cabs. I haven't been in one of these cabs. Here's one, let's hop in. An Apache AS850. I'm guessing this is a smaller one, 800 gallon or 850 gallon tank. So it's actually making very similar to our case. I was gonna guess. So let's take a look. I will tell you, so what I know about the Apache sprayers, it's a more economical sprayer. It is, it is not hydraulic driven. It is uh, mechanical driven. So there's a transmission, there's a drive line, and it's two wheel drive instead of a hydrostatic transmission like on our K sprayers. So basically what the difference is, you get a drive line, it's a two wheel drive, just like a rear wheel drive car, whereas our K sprayer has four individual hydraulic motors. And there's pluses to minuses to both. This is more simple, lighter, but the hydraulic drive is uh, less components you can get higher clearance easier just coming kind of overall the cab is pretty spacious actually kind of it's probably on par with our case if not a little bit better the weather wrap steering wheel i love it's still got your hydrostatic feel but obviously it'll have a uh, transmission you got your left boom right boom rack auto set and then master spray that's kind of nice everything's right on your joystick very simple, simple screen. It's got a Raven monitor in here. It's a very simple machine, but it's clean and I like that. It's honestly not bad. I'd like to demo one or drive one or something at some point, but this is a pretty nice actually, guys. This buddy seat can't be too comfy. But again, it goes back to that simplicity. It's kind of neat how it's, you don't see in the agricultural uh, realm. This is more like a, a car or something like that, but it's kind of built into the cab frame backrest for your buddy seat that's kind of neat it's got an 800 or 850 gallon plastic tank it's got aluminum boom so aluminum is definitely lighter than our steel for sure but i'm curious i don't know i don't know i personally wouldn't be a fan of aluminum booms because if our steel one breaks we can just weld it but if aluminum breaks you can't just weld it with a stick weld or anything like that you gotta bring it i don't know is, is it a tick weld guys what do you gotta do to aluminum i forget what type of welding process you gotta do i like it I actually really like it. You get under here, you can kind of see clearance isn't as high as our current as our current sprayer. Our current sprayer our clearance is about to right here, so we could lose about a foot of clearance with this. Mainly because see that drive shaft right there, drive shaft goes back into those axles, and that drive line goes down. So you, like I said, you lose a foot of clearance. Try to get a drive shaft down to this level, but still, it's not too bad. It's kind of neat though. Really cool sprayer. So here's another sprayer. Well, I guess not a sprayer, but. It uh, can be a sprayer. It's got a dry box on it right now. This is a Vector Venturi, or an RBR Venturi, I think is what they call it. This is a mechanical drive as well, but it is this one is full drive. So you can kind of see they have a drive shaft. Transmission comes down right here, and then they split it, go front and back. And you can kind of see this one's definitely not designed for high clearance applications. You only got maybe a foot, foot and a half clearance with this. But 
Again, the benefits of a mechanical driveline is it's much more efficient than a hydrostatic. I don't know, if I was gonna give you guys rough numbers, this type of driveline would be 4% loss, so 96% efficiency, whereas a hydrostatic would be like closer to 92, so it's kinda neat. The one thing that I'm really interested in looking at is this Fent 1 display. So like the next gen of Fent uh, user interface, essentially, they're calling it Fent 1, and it's a really cool, oh, that's actually live. So it's essentially like a tablet. So, I mean, you can tap on it. It's basically like you can see just about anything you want to look at. So you got hydraulics, lighting, transmission, joystick controls, map. I mean, this is freaking cool. I would like to see this Fent 1 or just a Fent tractor in general seem really cool and just kind of cutting edge. You don't see a lot of them in my area, but you're starting to because the local uh, dealer in my hometown just started dealing fence. So who knows? I know my neighbor just bought two of them. So who knows? This, uh, this command arm right here is freaking cool. It looks really complicated. But that's what I've heard, these, these uh, consoles, there's a lot going on, but it's pretty easy to figure out. I just want to say thank you for everyone who's uh, been flagging me down and said hi. It's been enough of you guys, I forget. I won't be able to name off all your names, but thank you guys so much. It was a pleasure meeting you all. The one thing I am kind of surprised at the show, there's really not a lot of like new, more or less groundbreaking tech here. I was expecting to see a lot more drone stuff, a lot more, you know, automatic computer vision stuff, machine learning type stuff here, but really, I mean, the show is pretty much the same show as it was two years ago, which I'm kind of surprised, you know. Same layout, same equipment, same everything. So that's just kind of interesting note that I had. We'll keep walking around, see what we see. At the Massey booth right now, they're kind of mid-sized, more for hay, utility tractors, that type of such. Hey, look, Kloss sells tankers. Just kidding, they don't. But if they did, they'd paint it lime green and probably charge twice the price for it. <laughs> just kidding. Let's go take a look at the Kloss combine. 8,700, I'm guessing? 8600, so that is a class eight wide body machine. Let's take a look. You kind of see, serviceability is awesome. If you need to change anything. There's really not that many belts on this side. I was kind of surprised. You got one variable belt here, one back belt here, one variable belt there. Really not as bad as I thought it'd be on this side. I'm guessing you gotta remove this to access the APS or change any grates or anything like that. Ah, I may rag on Gloss maybe because I'm a deer guy, deer slash red guy, but they, they make a good machine. It eats corn. I'll give them that. Do not like the look of this. It's interesting. Walked around that equipment last year. The prowler and whatnot. Check out look at that video right here. These are some heavy duty chains on this baler. Probably shouldn't have done that. Because I would have had some grease on it. Now being able to do something like that would be pretty sweet. Load up your own bales and it'd have it, be able to grind it and shoot it. Into, the cat, into our cattle yard. That'd be pretty sweet. This is a fun first day. I haven't gotten any uh, product interviews yet, but I should, it's only four o'clock. We should have most of the day tomorrow to kind of walk through this stuff, but it's been fun. Ran into a couple people, ran into the Iowan farmer, L.R. Roush Farms. Ran into a couple guys going to see how farms work here shortly. But for the most part, like I said, I guess I really didn't explain it, but I'm in Louisville, Kentucky for the United States' largest indoor farm show. So it's, it's kind of cool. It's definitely uh, a lot to see. There's a lot to go on that's going on here. So but I hope you guys enjoy it, at least from my perspective, because I can you know, talk a little bit more technical about a lot of things just because of my degree and background and everything like that. But if you guys are interested in seeing anything else, especially next year, let me know. Those fence are some slick looking tractors. A Branson tractor. I have never seen this before. Never even heard of a Branson tractor before. This is kind of neat. I mean, so it's got a mission system, so it's over 50 horse, 75 horse, anything over, above 50 horse, I believe, and below 700 horse has to have emission systems on it of some port. It looks like just a standard cheap tractor. Basic transmission, no power shift. So we're walking around right now, show's over. So we'll have a little bit of time, but let's hop in this Patriot sprayer, take a look at it. So we got a 4450. Check out the new grill. This thing's awesome. And the bigger chassis sprayers now can come with 50, 50 with R50 tires, which are basically almost as tall as me. And it's a pretty high clearance machine, that's for sure. I think I got a stalker, guys. I'm gonna walk this way. He's, he's just creeping on me. The gal was cleaning the windows, so I'm gonna walk over and see if Mike Les is there, still here. So it's five o'clock, the show runs from like nine to five, I believe. But because I got a media pass, I can get here a little bit earlier and stay a little later. Kong slide. So here we got an AFS Connect Steiger 420. It's the newest model, this is a model year 2022. 
We've got CVX drive, which I'm going to explain all that. So an AFS Connects tractor, what that means is it's basically a, oh, almost fall to get in here. It's got the new generation of connectivity and monitoring system from KZH. So it's got the Pro 1200 monitor in here. It's got the new command arm, new interior, new everything designed by their counterparts at Dodge. Because you know, if you don't, if you guys don't know, the same parent company that makes Dodge is the same parent company that makes uh, Case IH. So that's what the AFS Connect stands for. It's the new monitor. It's the new connectivity. You can get better fleet logistics and everything with them. It's kind of neat. CVX Drive. It's basically a CVT transmission in a four-wheel drive tractor so you can get it up to like mid midway through like 540 or something like that. It's the highest cvx drive uh tractor you can get on a four-wheel drive but it's pretty cool i've always i would love to demo one or drive one because in my opinion a cvx drive 420 would be awesome to pull our planner because i think we're always going to want to or my uncle always wants to run a four-wheel drive tractor on the planner just because the maneuverability you get with it but yeah, this is this is really cool this interior is awesome but now let's go take a look at the sprayer. It looks like they're done cleaning. So look at this. The trim, the red leather, leather wrapped steering wheel. Pretty sweet. These guys did a really nice job designing this. Let's hop up and take a look. You can already tell right away this is different. You don't have your pins to kind of lock your boom in anymore. It's, all, it's on an air cylinder, so that's kind of nice. Even though no one's ever used pins in their life. On a deer sprayer anyway, or on a case sprayer, sorry. It's pretty narrow to get in there, I don't like that. Still pretty narrow. But again, it's AFX Connect platform, so it's got the 1200 monitor. Got a new, oh. It's got a bump hydro, so that's different. Our um, current sprayers, and actually all spray case sprayers before that were a hydro, you know, you push it and you hold it to go faster, pull it back to go slower. Now this one's got a bump. So if you want to go a little bit faster, you bump it. Interesting. I think I actually like that better. I don't know. I'd like to demo it to try it, but I think I'd actually like that better. Yeah, there's seven switches or nine section switches here, which I like that they're still switches. All your boom controls are right here. So you got left wing up and down, right wing up and down, auto track button. Have no clue what this is. This is your fold, not your center rack, then transmission speed. I'm guessing your auto fold is right here. Yep. So you fold. Really a nice system. I mean, this is laid out nice and clean, trim, and everything matches that 420 AFS Connect Steiger. This is nice. And if this carpet comes with, which I don't know if it does, but it looks like it does because it's mounted with it, or like it, it, all the contours match, that'd be pretty sweet. Wow. This is a nice unit. Case, like I said, you guys did a really nice job with it. Figure out a way to make that door entry bigger and that'd be even better. 1600 gallon tank right here. Take a look at the engine compartment. Oh, there's the dreaded def cam, so that's no fun. How do you check your oil? Where the heck do you check your oil at? Don't tell me if you pop, pop off another cover. Oh, I bet it's right there. So obviously there's a little bit more because our sprayer is a tier three. It was a 2012, 2013. Does not take def, but this one does take def. It's got a EGR. It's got some sort of emission system right here, not, not necessarily an EGR. But overall, they made a lot of changes with the sprayer. I'm looking forward to hopefully uh, being able to try one someday. And the lighting package is amazing, is what I've heard. So that'd be also be really cool. They have a semi now. That is awesome that Deer has a semi. <laughs> it's a tall one too. It's gotta be at least 13.6 if not more. Just their merchandise like store. I'm gonna blur him out. Yeah, blur him out now. <laughs> My vacation. You getting a new ADAR? Maybe. Nice. If it ever comes. What's this Andy Clean stuff? I don't like the guy. The guy is from out of Canada, but I don't know the heck the deal is with that. Any of you guys have any idea? He's the one that's like on TikTok. I, yeah, all. I know he's like on that, but he, he, apparently he cleans stuff really well. I don't know. I'm going to hop in this thing though. I want to drive one of these new 8Rs. Hopefully I get two for work at some point, but they just look slick. I want to drive one with the Command Pro. So it's got a joystick similar to a combine handle instead of this IBT controller. These things are pretty sweet. They're even advertising like a cell phone mount holder or something like that. Probably my favorite thing though, this, where's the seat swivel? Oh geez. People have been doing numbers on this seat. But if the seat swivels, you actually get three foot pegs, one here, here, and right there. Alex, did you know that all visitors need to wear a mask? I don't feel safe. Thank you. 
mainly to cover up your ugly face. Well, that's it for day one of the National Fire Machinery Show, for me at least, it's Friday. I'll come back tomorrow morning, we'll get some more cool stuff, and then call her a year. Good morning, guys. Update for you all, it's day two. Sorry, I don't know when that froze. But just a quick side note, the amount of looks, weird looks I'm getting, it's, uh, it's kind of funny. I wonder if people just think I'm an influencer in the wild or whatever they want to, whatever the hip term is. But either way, it was a rough night last night, but I had a lot of fun with a lot of people and stayed out way too late. We'll just leave it at that. So I'm probably only going to make one video out of the National Farm Machinery Show this year, mainly because I didn't get here until 1030. And this place is an absolute zoo right now. So we'll see what we can see, who we can see, and let's go have some fun. <laughs> and not get killed by traffic. Thunder. Take one from Zach. So I just stopped at the uh, Thunder Creek booth, had a really good conversation with a couple guys on uh, potentially putting some additions to our Thunder Creek trailer. Now I'm just gonna walk around to the other building I haven't seen yet this year. Here's the West Wing. This thing is huge. It looks like you basically pull a truck up for silage, it dumps it into a baler bales it and then you wrap it so you basically turn silage that you chop into a, a silage bale that you wrap neat that thing is massive and i don't even want to know how much it cost i feel like that's a very european application you won't see much of that in the u.s if you're just or if you're already going to chop it you're going to go ahead and just put it in a bunker but what do i know answer not a lot post driver of some sort will be cool as heck someday oh i don't have to break my head or my dad doesn't need to split his finger open trying to pound post him. Maybe someday. There's just something about chrome and shiny trucks with lots of lights. Especially that one. That one's cool. Uh, it's going to be recording, was it? Yeah, it's recording. Oh, get out of here. <laughs> Hey guys, so I'm at the Helio booth right now, and you guys know I love drones. I have a drone right now. What's really interesting to me is these massive drones we have behind. And I have Arthur here, who's a, uh, what would you say, what's your title at Helio? I am one of the co-founders and the CEO of Helio. So he, and he knows a little bit about what he's doing. So, uh, so Arthur, go ahead and take us through what you got here. Sure, so we are a manufacturer of these drones based out of Houston, Texas. So hardware design is ours. We manufacture them down there on our ranch. Software is all, all ours. We've been at this since 2015. Mm -hmm. It's been a long time coming. Our drones are mostly used for what you would imagine. They replace crop dusting methods, um, either airplanes or, or even ground sprayers, mm -hmm. essentially with more precision, cheaper, and with full automation. So you go out with one of these drones, you're looking at a boundary, you're defining a dosage that you want, a swath width, you're clicking go, the rest is hands off. The operator at this point is still there to swap battery and swap payload between flights, but again, the rest is easy, and he's only doing that for about 30 seconds every 10 minutes. Fairly painless process. Most of our customers right now are doing fungicide and herbicide application on row crops, but we also have a lot of customers doing spot spraying. So going out, IDing weed pressure areas, um, southern, southern rust, tar spot, mm -hmm. stuff like that, spraying just those areas and saving on chemical costs and also time and labor and all that. That's an awesome, awesome speech. And the cool thing about it, like you said, you're replacing a ground rig. And when you have a ground rig, you have tires. When you have tires, you have damaged crops. So with this thing, you're just, you're so much more agile, you're more mobile, you can do so much. It just opens the door to so many different things. So it's really cool. So I appreciate the time, Arthur. Thank yeah, you so much. Thank you. Well, that was pretty neat. Like I said, I, I was hoping to see a drone company here. We did. Really curious. I don't know. Depending on how they do it, I see drones taking off and potentially replacing ground rigs or maybe you know, smaller operations being able to do more with it, especially as machine learnings and whatnot get closer. If we have a field of soybeans that aren't canopied yet, you can send a drone out there and just do spot spraying where the weeds are. It can picture, take a picture of the weed or it can, through its camera, look at the weed I know there's a weed patch there and go spray it. So I think that potentially, do I ever see them fully replacing ground rigs? No, but I think there's a potential there. So it's gonna be interesting to see what happens. This is awesome. A steel replica grain setup. That's probably the coolest thing I've seen at the show. I think that's gonna conclude my time at the National Farm Machinery Show. I need to get going, I wanna make it home not too long after dark. It's two o'clock right now, one, so one o'clock central time. Six hour drive home, get home at seven. But thank you guys for coming along with me. I really do appreciate it. Hope you enjoyed the video and we'll, uh, I'll close it out if I don't see anything else at the car. Thank to everybody who stopped and said hi to me. Just appreciate meeting y'all.
Oh, and before I mention it, guys, I am doing a little bit more on TikTok now. I just got my own TikTok. Search it, same username as my YouTube, Hartung Family Farms. Not sure exactly what type of content I'm going to post on there, but we'll find out. Maybe a journey. You guys will find out along when I do. And just like that, poof, Ronald's gone. Well, that was a fun show. Hope you guys enjoyed it. Hope you learned a little bit of something. Hope you uh, just hope you just had fun. That's the whole goal of this channel. Have fun, learn a little bit of something, and take a little bit of time away from a busy schedule. So I appreciate all you guys watching. I appreciate the support. We just hit 40,000 subscribers a couple days ago. That's awesome. Way bigger than I ever thought it'd be. So thank you guys, every single one of you. You guys have a good one. Take care, take it easy, stay safe, and ta-ta for now.